Hi, my name is Curtis, and you're watching the Playing With Art Show. In today's episode, I'm going to show you some of my early paper sculpture from back in 2003 through 2009. This is a time when I lived in Chicago, and it was my goal to take myself much more seriously as an artist, and so I was spending more time making stuff. So here is what I did back then. Okay, so we're going to go down memory lane here. This is 2003, January, freezing cold winter in Chicago. I move into a studio apartment, put down plastic over the carpet, and start experimenting. This piece on the left is probably over six feet tall. It's a series of blades of cardboard that were cut in curved shapes, just randomly spliced together, and then covered with a surface of several coats of paper mache, you know, newsprint that was saturated in PVA glue and water. The small circles on the right were done in a similar process. This three foot figure was done also in a similar way, but I added an extra layer of strips of text that came out of a book and then did a wash over the whole thing in a transparent orange acrylic. After doing a series of other sculptures using that traditional newsprint approach to paper mache, I had the idea of using paper grocery bag, which is a much stronger paper, and it turned out it only required about one layer to create a strong surface versus several layers with a newsprint. For this piece, I used very thin pieces of brown grocery bag, and through the water and glue process, the edges, which were torn instead of cut, um, darkened and created a nice, interesting texture. I then started experimenting with the color of the grocery bag. So this bird on the left was a grocery bag that had purple printing on it. So I used mainly the back of the bag, which was brown, but just with little bits of the purple printing. On the right, I'm using a Trader Joe's bag, which has black and red printing. And I'm using a combination, again, of the brown inside of the bag and then the colored outside of the bag to create more a colored surface. On this piece, I'm using the line drawings from the Trader Joe's bag and cutting them into small pieces and creating this more textured colored surface for part of the sculpture. On this piece, I'm using the graphics of the Trader Joe's bag and wrapping them into loops to create links that become part of a necklace. This piece, which is about three feet tall, started out as just a simple profile of the main shape, and then I added pieces of cardboard to create the legs and the dimension in the eyes. For this piece, I actually had a process photo. So this was taken before the paper mache was added. This was a little more of an intricate process or structure made of several very precisely cut pieces of cardboard to create the sculptural profile of this abstract tree-like shape. And this was the most complex piece I did in the series, again about six feet tall, but this has a series of drawers that actually pull out, and the sculpture has two distinct sides. One has these more amorphous orb-like shapes inside the recesses, and the other one, they're flat, flush with the front of the sculpture. And then this is a more simple and whimsical shape, and this is actually a direction that I'm now returning to and applying mixed media surfaces to. Thanks for watching. You can check out more of my work on my website at studiocurtis.com.